the leader and administrator of the Reptile Guys, and today I'd like to present to you episode two of Reptile Care Videos, Southern Alligator Lizard Care. Now I know I've done a video similar to this called Southern Alligator Lizard, but uh, I, I really would like to explain more in depth on new information I have on care for these lizards and uh, on, on standard feeding and lighting and temperature and uh, substrate and decor and I, I really want to give you guys a good idea of how to care for these guys alright so let's get to it alright so this is my uh, 10 gallon aquarium setup for my adult female southern alligator lizard angel uh, you guys have met her several times in other videos and uh, today I'd like to uh, show you her in her tank all happy. Uh, I had her out a second ago but it seems like she hit again so I'm going to uh, keep talking while you guys uh, watch me grab her. So this lizard is about three years old and she is like I said an adult female. She has uh, never bred before um, because of her uh, recently acquired adulthood and I'd like she's very healthy and I'd like to tell you why she's very healthy and how I kept her that way so first of all let's let's start off with um, these lizards uh, metabolism so these lizards can uh, generate heat from themselves meaning they're they're semi warm-blooded they uh, unlike their uh, other lizard cousins they can regulate their temperatures uh, higher as in they can make themselves warmer if needed and keep themselves warm uh, especially if it's cold out but they cannot cool themselves down which means if they do get too hot or overheat they would have to seek water immediately now that's why these lizards particularly like their environments especially in captivity cold they do not like any uh, extreme heat and oftentimes they will die if um, exposed to too much heat. Now living in Southern California the way these lizards survive in 100 degree weather in the summertime is you will often find them near any kind of water source. It doesn't matter if it's a bird bath, a pool, a local stream, sprinkler system or uh, I don't know just a, a damp uh, leaf litter or substrate. These lizards do have to keep themselves cool um, from the environment, but like I said, they can't keep themselves warm, which means they do not bask. These lizards are not baskers, like a, a common uh, fence lizard or a uh, whiptail lizard or a horned lizard or any other lizard for that matter. They don't bask. They, uh, they're oftentimes hiding in the leaf litter or wood uh, pieces or a wood pile, I suppose, or rock piles or uh, let's say even um, even like a, I don't know, bricks or, or suburban things like hedges. Now, uh, I do live in, happen to live in suburbia, a suburban neighborhood, and these lizards have very well adapted to this lifestyle by living in our uh, outdoor decoration hedges, and that's where I find them. Now, you're not going to find these lizards anywhere else unless you're looking for them. You really do have to look. You'd have to like stick your nose inside of a hedge and see if you see one climbing around there. But other than that, they're really good at hiding. Now, I tried to replicate a hedge in this vine uh, I have right here, and that's as far as my uh, fake foliage in this tank. But I do have four wood pieces for climbing. Now, these lizards are semi arboreal lizards, which means arboreal means climbing, tree dwelling. Now, semi arboreal means they do like the ground too. 
Now, for substrate, I, I, I've provided wood chips, and they do like to dig occasionally, especially because they're diurnal lizards, they sleep at night, and sometimes she likes to dig under this and sleep down there. Um, as far as water, I have a, uh, a medium-sized water dish, medium to small size. She can use this to cool down if she has to, which she normally doesn't because my room is air-conditioned and it stays around 75 uh, all day long and so she mainly uses that for drinking. Now as far as feeding, these are very ferocious and insectivores. They, uh, they eat literally anything and anything as long as they can overpower it and fit it in their mouths. Uh, they're not fearful of your hand or any tongs or tweezers such when you're feeding them, uh, at least mostly. This one in particular, I could feed her straight from the tongs. In fact, I do every time I feed her because I find it easier than making her uh, chase around a cricket and possibly not catch it right away. So I like to feed her on time. She's very uh, well scheduled as far as feeding. Now uh, back to what she eats. Uh, any insect really, they say to um, give them a variety of insects which I do recommend. I give her super worms, dubia roaches, and crickets on variety of the time I feed her. Um, I like to give her at least one superworm and one cricket per feeding, and per feeding uh, is every other day. You can probably get away with feeding them less or feeding them more, but that's that's pretty much the standard average feeding schedule. And uh, depending on their size, of course, if it's a big male that's two feet long, you could probably feed it like four insects, larger insects uh, a day, and then a smaller specimen, probably um, maybe one cricket a smaller cricket or so every other day or so but other than that that keeps them very healthy and alert I oftentimes will take the tongs and tease her around with it make her chase a little bit so she still gets her instinctive hunting skills uh, so she can still practice that in case I do leave a crick in the tank so she knows how to uh, capture it um, they're very very good eaters like I said they, they don't hesitate to eat if they're hungry but like I said, if you do overfeed them, they may uh, turn down a food item. She's done that before. And uh, her size and her age, she's shown me that she's hungry every other day. And that, that seems to work. Now lighting is uh, pretty standard. I do have a heat lamp even though it's not needed just in case to keep it um, the same temperature every day. And then I... Uh, not at the moment, but in the next couple of days, I'm going to get a uh, UVB light, which is needed for these lizards, so they still get the same vitamins they would get outdoors in the sun, which I do have on my other lizards. Now, the UVB is the same light bulb as this one that I have on the horned lizard, and uh, it's it's a Zoomed brand, and it's it's very standard and cheap, usually around ten dollars at the local Triple L Reptile. Now, uh, other than that. You should be very um, successful in keeping these lizards. A uh, 10 gallon aquarium for housing one lizard at max two is very, uh, is very limited. So uh, a big male, like a two foot adult male southern alligator lizard would probably require a bigger tank, probably like a 20 or 30 gallon. And a uh, smaller female like her, she's about 14 inches. This is a good setup for housing one southern alligator lizard. And she could live her entire life in here very happy. And she has much space to roam around, dig, climb, do whatever she happens to feel like doing. And uh, other than that, these lizards, like snakes, they shed their skin every month or so. And sorry, like I said, like snakes, they shed their entire skin off, not in pieces like other lizards. They uh, can drop their tails which is very, which makes uh, Angel very valuable to me because she has that original tail and it's rare to find a wild one with that same tail. Usually you'll find a juvenile, which I did find her as a juvenile and I raised her. Uh, their tails are as well prehensile, which means they can move it, wrap it around your fingers, they use it as far as climbing and balance, so they have control over their tails completely. And uh, Breeding season uh, is early spring to early summer, and then uh, egg laying season is um, uh, 
early to midsummer, and then fall is when those eggs would hatch. And they these lizards mature at 18 months, both sexes. Uh, females may take a little longer to respond to breeding uh, because uh, oftentimes they won't be ready to carry eggs at the first breeding season and like this was her uh, second breeding season she still wasn't res responding too well to my male which is okay it was very late in the season but next year hopefully I can breed with uh, Christoph's reptiles again and maybe we'll be uh, successful uh, now they're very intelligent lizards uh, unlike most they're um, they can uh, memorize things as such as food their environments mates and uh, territory they they can remember pretty well including their handlers and owners like myself she she will respond to myself and uh, a few other reptile guys and many um, other friends of mine extremely well because they've handled her in the past um, just meaning that she'll come to my hand literally when I put my hand in there and probably not others uh, right away but she responds to handling very well now they uh, if you handle them often they should tame down but a wild lizard a fresh catch will bite musk and and poop it's just it's they're very nasty lizards when you first catch them but after a few years they they settle down pretty nicely so that's about all the information I have on the southern alligator lizard um, and let me go back to my mirror so I hope I covered everything needed for southern alligator lizard care uh, let me know in the comments if I missed anything or you have any questions I'll be happy to answer those uh, like share and subscribe really would help us as far as our channel so I, uh, I can keep the guys motivated to post I plan in the future to soon post the episode 3 day, days 5 and 6 of SoCal Herping and possibly another reptile room soon so thank you again for watching and well have a nice day. See ya.